Just weeks prior, I was playing in the NFL for the Seattle Seahawks in front of a stadium of 80,000 people. How did I end up in this place? The answer, I was living without a gut and I was only using one brain. If I asked you to draw a picture of the brain, you'd draw this, right? But the organ that I should have been tuned into was in fact this, the stomach, the gut. I bet at some point someone has told you to trust your gut instinct, right? Which means listen to your inner voice, your intuition. And if you're good and you're experienced at this, you know that it's oftentimes correct, even more so maybe than your conscious mind. Think about a time in the last week when you felt something about a situation or a person. You didn't know why, but you felt certain that it was true. There's power in the gut and science actually backs this up. Without the ability to let one lead or have perfect harmony between the two, we can impair our truest inclinations. So the gut has massive value. I, I, probably, I probably should have said this. I could have realized what took me to drug detox two years earlier. Because I was on the side of the road, my car had broken down, my girlfriend's with me, we're waiting for roadside assistance. And this is when we witnessed the most gruesome and horrific motorcycle accident. I wish I could tell you that I ran toward the wreckage to perform a life-saving act, but I didn't. Instead, I reached for my cell phone to dial 911. And I look up to find my girlfriend wearing nothing but a swimsuit cover up and flip-flops, and she is the one running toward danger. Later when I asked her why she didn't hesitate, she looked at me and said, I don't know, I didn't think, I just trusted my gut because if that was my dad or my brother, I'd expect someone to do the same. You see, my, my, my girlfriend, she showed what gut instincts can do, right? She trusted her gut. Now I learned two things that day. The first, I was gonna marry this incredible woman, and I did. And the second, that I froze. See, this didn't make sense to me because at the time, I'm an NFL starting linebacker, right? A modern day gladiator. Someone that should have prided himself on rising to the occasion when it mattered most. How could I apply valor every day on the football field? But in the case of a life and death scenario, do nothing. See, the father lived, the son did not. My wife relied on instincts which called her into action while my head rationalized because of fear and I cowardly played it safe. So if the gut is this powerful, this valuable, and psychology reminds us of the purpose of intuition, why do so many of us here in this room today do our best to rationalize it away? It's because of fear. This battle is happening constantly. It's a battle between intellect and instinct. Fear locks us into conformity, okay? It makes us buy into others' expectations for our lives and then it robs us of our true inclinations. Why did I stuff my face full of pain medication? It was because of the fear of an identity crisis. When I got hurt in football, I didn't know who I was without football. So the idea of going back to something that I wasn't a lead at struck fear into my heart. I didn't have a gut instinct. It led me to a place that it was easier just to grab that and numb myself than to step into that uncertainty. How many of you, raise your hand if you've ever been the last pick in anything in your life? Last pick, yeah. Well, I was the last pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, making me Mr. Irrelevant. The title given to the last pick because they rarely make the team, but I put everything that I had into overcoming that title, and I changed the statistics on Mr. Irrelevant. I became a starter my rookie year. I had achieved success, but because my why was completely wrapped up in my own agenda, it didn't have meaning, it didn't have purpose, and it was not sustainable. So I was living gutless. That's what pushed me to cope. As I took a year off I, I, after rehab, I started to rehabilitate my mind and my body, and I was preparing to return to the league. But what I was doing was I was waking up my gut I was taking the time to figure out who I was, what my gifts and, and, and skills were, and what I had just endured, and what the purpose of it was in my life. So, as I began to soul search, the call came for me to return to the NFL, and in that moment, something was different. 
I thought I'd be excited, but I wasn't. So I decided to listen to my gut, even though it was scary, even though I'd much rather take the paycheck in the NFL. Instantly, my brain tried to call me back, but I knew in my gut it was time to close that, that chapter. And I did. What I'm telling you is that the gut has massive value if you'll listen. It's worth being tuned into because you're gonna be able to assess situations and then act and help those in need or even help yourself. Think about a time maybe you've been in a relationship and you knew in your gut it wasn't right, but your head wanted to believe it was, right? On paper it was. So you stayed with that person because you didn't want to hurt them. Some of you may be there right now, but you're doing yourself and that person a disservice. You see, the supply and demand in today's world through my lens is that your supply, your gifts, your talents, your experiences, the adversity that you've faced, that's the supply and the demand is to change the world for someone right in front of you. It doesn't take anything extraordinary. We like to make leaders those who change the world, right? We just marginalize our own capability and we put it conveniently out of our reach. But the truth is that in our daily lives, we have an opportunity to deal hope and the gut is the best compass to do that. You guys, it's critical to wake your gut up. I challenge you in closing today to go and wake your gut up for it is the genesis of your highest calling and through service that excites you, change the world for someone today. Thank you so much.